Okay, today's video isn't so much a tutorial as it is an update. Uh, just to give you guys some idea of uh, what preparations are being made for the next set of uh, tutorials uh, in the Bill and Bob Kismet series. Um, this uh, that you're looking at right now is not UDK, this is the Unreal Editor for Unreal Tournament 3. And uh, the reason for that is that we are currently looking at the original Bill and Bob uh, level that I designed in Unreal Tournament 3. Uh, this was the original inspiration for uh, me doing the tutorials in UDK and um, also the, the starting point that we based uh, most of the um, uh, most of the lessons on. Uh, you can see that we have a level constructed here uh, it can might be a little bit dark. Uh, I've got uh, very little lighting and also I have a darkness fog applied. Uh, if I switch over to lighting only that might give you some idea of the geometry a little bit better. Now um, the, uh, the actual construction of this level uh, such as the static meshes that we used and the BSP uh, won't be covered in these uh, tutorials because these tutorials are going to be mainly focused on um, kismet and not level design uh, but there, are, there will be some sort of small tips uh, to give you some idea of um, how uh, I did some things that might not be immediately obvious and uh, there's one thing that uh, is definitely a um, an Unreal Tournament 3 uh, property and not uh, UDK is that we have a Dark Walker in this scene. Um, and this is the basic sort of layout of this level. It uh, has three levels and walkways uh, mirrored on either side. Now uh, a couple of these uh, things uh, will change once we bring this into uh, UDK and I will be showing you how to do that. For example things like this static mesh uh, do not exist uh, as um, uh, and this static mesh uh, also does not exist uh, neither does this or this sorry um, well at any rate this um, See, I think it's the wrong side. Yeah, uh, this um, static mesh um, they do not ex uh, do not exist in UDK, and uh, neither, strangely enough, um, do these sections here. So we have to um, we have to do something about that when we bring this into UDK. So I'll just play through this level and give you some idea of uh, of uh, what it plays like. And so I'm just going to play from here. Okay. Now the trigger that I have uh, set up to spawn Bob uh, is right on this player start uh, and instead of it being a touch event, uh, well it's still a touch event but the actual condition um, that it's looking for is when the trigger is untouched which means that it activates as soon as we step off um, this uh, pedestal here. So I'm just going to back off this and you can see that um, we've spawned in Bob as, we, um, as we've done in the uh, UDK lessons. You can uh, tell that this is definitely uh, Unreal Tournament 3 because um, the characters that we have in this game are the Iron Guard um, pawns and not the robots that we have in, um, in UDK. Now um, You'll also notice that when we are playing through um, the play and editor window, we do occasionally get those pauses which um, uh, stop the, uh, the updating um, uh, as we're playing. And uh, these can come at very inopportune moments. Now, um, currently there is a dynamic blocking volume set up uh, around this portal and we need to get rid of that um, as part of our gameplay. I'm just going to come in here and pick up a link gun and uh, just as it was with um, the UDK version uh, the link gun beam mode is going to swap characters. 
So I'm going to stand the character on this um, little icon here, which is our dual character trigger. I'm just going to swap over to Bob. Now, as soon as I uh, touch uh, this trigger uh, with both characters, uh, a new trigger appears that needs to be um, that needs both characters, and this trigger will open up this portal. Now, I don't have a link gun, so I'll go and get one. Bob doesn't. And so, once both characters uh, touch this, you'll notice that the portal will open. And now we can take our characters up here. Now, um, previously, the um, the Dark Walker here had two enemy pawns in it that would try to kill us. But for this demonstration, I just took those guys out, just so that we don't have to uh, worry about them uh, killing us repeatedly um, while we're um, uh, while we're running through this level. So I'm just going to grab those jump boots and swap over to. Um, I can't remember if it's Bill or Bob. That's one of the improvements that we made when we um, when we changed uh, over to UDK. So uh, with both characters having jump boots, I'm just going to jump one character up onto a pedestal, jump the other character up onto the pedestal across the way here. And now we... The link beam doesn't reach that far, so what we have to do is jump one character up to this higher level, swap over to um, the other character, and then jump him up to there. And each character now has one jump left, which is enough to bring them up to this little crossroads here. And so. Uh, with them both up here. We could place another dual trigger here or we could have something to do with this um, uh, this monitor here. Perhaps there'll be a, another one across there that um, each character has to access and so we have a trigger that can only be triggered uh, if we have one character in each spot. So that's the, uh, the basic um, uh, playthrough of uh, the original game as it stood before we started um, creating things in UDK. So uh, how much of this level can we bring across to UDK? Now the first thing that we have to do is we have to find the map in the um, Unreal Tournament folder and uh, the maps folder for UDK and we, j we can just drag across a copy, so hold control to copy, and uh, then we just change the uh, file extension to UDK. And now, um, in our UDK editor, and uh, it's really good to be back, we can open up uh, that um, original file that we've just changed the file extension on and uh, see how we go here. We get all of these warnings. These are all things that uh, do not exist in UDK or rely upon things that do not exist in UDK. So there are missing files and missing objects. And you can see this is what we are left with. And you'll notice that there are a lot of static meshes, like those crossroads I told you about, uh, the original starting platform, and um, other things like these uh, corner parts here um, that are missing. There are also a few textures that we need to replace. But uh, I was lucky for the most part because I used a lot of static meshes that do come with UDK.